interpretations are it lies in uh, formal terms. It allows light to play across the, the surface, um, the composition, and that's thought that the painting then has a spiritual presence. These are more recent um, uh, adaptations. I've never seen the, the zigzag. The zigzag in uh, uh, Raymond Guinea and over that way means a uh, river course, of course, and, and a wind pattern, the wind, the first winds of the wet, wet season. On the right here, you have all these diamond patterns that are associated with the honey spirit. And as you can imagine, it, we fight against sugar in this day and age and everything, that for a society that doesn't have sugar cane, any sugar it has magical qualities. If anyone's been, I went on a pretty good diet once, believe it or not, and uh, I've since given it up, of course, and uh, uh, you would find just giving up sugar, if you give up sugar within a week or two weeks, the effect on your body is incredible. You'll sleep better. It's a drug that, you know, you don't realise how much it's a drug. And uh, it will get, once it's out of your system, you find, you discover things that you never realised before. <laughs> You're reading my book on uh, how to live a better life. Anyway. Um, these are the uh, original poles that, uh, are, uh, that led this revolution after the Second World War. Uh, 1958, uh, these were commissioned on Melville Island, in fact, Melville Island, which is not the more popular island now, it was more well known as uh, uh, Bathurst, where the Catholics went, and uh, set up their mission there, um, and where the football happens there. Now, Aboriginal dance, we talk about Aboriginal things being mixed, that uh, they take place, and it's almost like Aboriginal people dance for fun and profit. Um, the, play, the photograph on the right up here is an Aboriginal dance group at Expo in Tokyo in 1972. Now this is when the Japanese really became famous, uh, not infamous, but they became more famous in a friendly way, uh, that they were a superpower in the world. They had Expo there, that was the first monorail that we ever really saw that was set up to take people from this place to the airport in, uh, in Osaka. And uh, I was there in that place about three, four years ago. I spent a year in a museum on this site, the Expo site, uh, Expo Park. Now, in the, um, Darwin, right from the, after the Second World War, they used to put a commission or pay, basically, Aboriginal people to dance for visiting uh, p and liners and visiting guests, etc. So this photograph is in Darwin, the gardens, down near the Gardens Oval, uh, in Darwin itself. And on regular occasions they danced like this. It was never seen as real art. It was seen as a curiosity thing, uh, etc. Uh, in the other, the left figure is Jardy Ashley, the artist again. Yeah, we do, in yeah. the exhibition downstairs. Yes, and his wife, he's married uh, to, was married to Dorothy Jukul. They used to collaborate uh, together on a lot of uh, paintings. Uh, this is him here. And uh, we were talking about people seeing fabric for the first time. This uh, dance thing is not a crucifixion, but it uh, represents um, the pole, the mast of a boat. Every year uh, uh, up until... 1900, 1910, uh, Macassan people from what's now Indonesia used to come and visit the north coast of Australia. And uh, at the end of their time, they come there uh, with uh, the northwest trade winds, or northeast, sorry, winds that bring them down. They then spend, uh, put their boats up, wait till the end of the dry season collecting pearl shell and uh, sea cucumber. Um, there's a, a restaurant in Chinatown called the Something Oceans Restaurant. It's really huge upstairs. Something Oceans Restaurant. And you can buy, you can order sea, sea cucumber, which has uh, it's a particular attraction, I guess. 
arts and acquired taste. <laughs> but it uh, had a very big market. Uh, they used to dry it, they used to smoke these things, dry them, uh, and uh, take them back to uh, Indonesia. And then they eventually worked their way to Singapore where they sold them to the Chinese as an aphrodisiac. This spirit figure here on the right, on the left, uh, is uh, Moriana, the honey spirit. And near where David Melanie used to live, um, this is the body pack <coughs> for it, but he's also associated with a particular wind that comes. And as I said, that honey would be seen as a almost sacred thing. If you'd never tasted honey before, uh, and you suddenly had honey, it gives you lots of energy, it makes you... Um, strengthens you, it allows you to do things that you never thought before. And that he's associated with a wind that comes. And that's why this leaf of a plant, that's called a wild orange plant actually, um, is uh, associated with the honey spirit. And right near this place, we went, there was a sacred site there that I was showing. Um, and we followed it, we looked for it for four days. Just, it'd be like almost trying to find the curiosity shop between here and the next, you know, Campbell Parade. We went around this place for four days. We had six flat tyres. Uh, we thought something's telling us to keep away from this place. The whole truck was wrecked. Uh, we ran into trees and these trees seemed to attack us. It was amazing, you know. They, we'd think, oh yeah, those two trays will fit through there, and it seemed suddenly we'd be caught. <laughs> um, it was a really funny time at the end, because the anthropologist who was there had to limp back to Darwin. <laughs> we just completely wrecked the truck. It was brand new, brand new in the rock. <laughs> she, had to, <laughs> she had to borrow tyres and done that sort of thing. Anyway, but eventually we did find this site. And on the side of a hill, there were these big rocks about uh, double the size of uh, basketballs that were laid out in lines. So there was a big, there was a big cone, phallic cone shape on the side of this hill. And that was where this honey spirit who taught people to be happy and to sing and dance. Uh, and uh, he's associated with a shark story that he came and killed a shark. There's a story which is like a tsunami story. As somebody told me that uh, the tides came in one wet season and they went out. And when they went out, they went way out, like way, way out. And uh, this shark was trapped in a pool. And this honey man found the shark and uh, saw it and he speared the shark and cut it up. As he was cutting it up, um, uh, the tide came back and this man told me what, when the tide came back it was like this tidal wave. And I was thinking, yeah, he was really uh, uh, colourfully describing this whole event. Um, but since then, I thought about this whole thing with the tsunami, and uh, he bolted, uh, as I say, excuse me, he ran and fled the, the tide coming in, and left the shark, and he got up uh, to the high ground. Now, nearby this place, Yatalamara, which is where the site was, was, there was a, the next bit of land is actually called the place of the shark. And there's a little pool there called Mer uh, Mirapi, which is uh, where the shark was trapped. And um, it suddenly started to make sense in uh, many ways. Um, 